Welcome. In this video, we are going to start off our factoring polynomials. So our first tool that we're always going to look for anytime you're factoring is the greatest common factor. So let's take a look at what that means. So a common factor is something that can be um, a factor of all of your terms. So we're first going to look at your coefficients and see what the greatest common factor is of those values. So if I have something 2x and 42y, I'm first going to look at 2 and 42 and say what goes into 2 and 42 evenly. So our greatest common factor of your um, coefficients here is 2 because 2 goes into 2 evenly and 2 goes into 42 evenly. And then we're going to look at our variables and see what do they have in common. So here I have an x and a y. They don't have anything in common. So factoring out our greatest common factor is the opposite of our distributive property that we are dividing something out. So I'm going to pull that out and say what's left in each of my factors when I divide by 2. So when I take 2 divided by 2, I'm left with 1 or just x, 1x. You could put a 1 here too if you wanted to. Plus... 42 divided by 2 is 21, and we still have that y. Okay, factoring is still equivalent to what we started with, so if you distribute this back through, you should get back to what you started with. Always a good idea to check your terms, see if you can have any common factors. 1 and 21 don't have any common factors, so you know you're all done. Okay, that one we had two terms, so we only had to deal with those two numbers. Here we have three terms. So again, I'm first going to start with the coefficients and say 8, 4, and 16. What is the largest thing that goes into each all of those um, equally? So I'll start with your smallest one and say, does 4 go into 8 and 16 evenly? If it does, that is your greatest common factor um, of the coefficient part. If it doesn't, look at your factors of your smallest one. Um, that'll help break down the process a little easier. Okay, then we're going to look at our variables. I have x cubed, which you remember is x times x times x, and x squared, which is x times x, and x. They all have a factor of x, so we're going to pull out an x as well. So again, then we're dividing. 8 divided by 4 is 2. x cubed divided by x, I now have x squared left minus 4 divided by 4 is 1, x squared divided by x, we have 1x left, minus 16 divided by 4 is 4, x divided by x goes away. Okay, and again, this one here, you can have it there, you don't have to have it there, it's completely up to you. Okay, so we're just going to continue that process. First, look at your coefficients, then look at your variables. So 12 and 14, does 12 go into 14 evenly? No, it does not. So 12's factors has 1 and 12, uh, 2 and 6. Okay, 2 goes into 14, 6 doesn't. 3 and 4, neither of those go into 14. So it looks like 2 is our greatest common factor there. I could put a, pull out a 2 or a negative 2 on this one. It's completely up to you. Um, either way would be totally fine. So if I just pull out a 2. This is just a constant, and this has a variable, so I can't pull out any variables. We'll be left with negative 7, 14 divided by 2, minus 6, 6 divided by 2, x squared. Okay, hopefully we're getting a little better at these. Remember, first, co coefficients, then your variable parts. So 3, 2, 10. Start with your smallest one. Does 2 go into 3 evenly? No. Does 2 go into 10 evenly? Yes, but it has to go to all of them. Okay, uh, so then factors of 2 are only 2 and 1, so our greatest common factor there is just 1. x squared, x nothing. So this already has the greatest common factor pulled out. GCF is 1. Okay, so we can't pull out a greatest common factor because our greatest common factor there is 1. Hey, next one here, we're looking at 20, x squared, y squared, minus 4, y, x. So if we are looking at um, pulling out our greatest common factor there, again, I'm going to start with my coefficients, 20 and 4. Does 4 go into 20 evenly? Yes, it does. So that is my greatest common factor. And then our variable part, remember x squared is x times x, y squared is y times y. So they both have an x, they both have a y. And then what are we left with? 20 divided by 4 is 5, divided out an x and a y, so now I have x, y, minus 4 divided by 4 is 1, and we divided both of those out, so we're there. Okay, uh, let's look at another one. If you're feeling good about this, pause it, try it on your own, and then come back. Okay, 
8, 16, 2. Does 2 go into 16 and 8? Yes, it does. So I'm going to pull out a 2. I have 3 factors of x, 2 factors of x, 1 factor of x. So we have 1 factor at least in each of them. 8 divided by 2 is 4. We're left with 2 factors of x. 16 divided by 2 is 8. We're left with 1 factor of x. And 2 divided by 2 is 1 and no factors of x. Okay, again, if you're feeling good about these, this will be a great time to try some on your own and then um, come back and check. Coefficients 6 and 8. So 6 does not go into 8 evenly, so now we're going to start looking at pair, or factors of 6. So 6 and 1, 2 and 3. 3 is bigger. Does 3 go into 8? No, 2 does. So 2 is our greatest common factor there. A squared is A times A. B squared is B times B. So they both have a factor of A and A factor of B. So 8 divided by 2 is 4. We got rid of a factor of A, a factor of B by dividing them out. So we're just left with A. 6 divided by 2 is 3. We got rid of a factor of A, a factor of B. So we're just left with B. So we're just taking it one step at a time. Look for your co coefficient, then your variables. 4, 24, 16. 4 is our smallest. Does 4 go into 24 evenly? Yes. Does 4 go into 16 evenly? Yes. So 4. Here I have 4 factors of x, 3 factors of x, 2 factors of x. They all have at least 2 factors of x, so I can take out an x squared. When I take out an x squared, we have 4 divided by 4 is 1, and we're left with x squared. 24 divided by 4 is 6x, and 16 divided by 4 is 4, and all of our x's were factored out there. You can always check these by distributing back through to see if um, it's still equivalent to what you started with. Okay, these next ones look a little different, but they're still factors. So remember, factors anything that's being multiplied by something else. So here, this looks a little different, but this whole thing x plus 2 is being multiplied by 5, and this whole thing, x plus 2, is being multiplied by 3. So both of these terms here have a factor of x plus 2. So we can factor out that x plus 2 and say, okay, I divided out that x plus 2. Now what's left over? Oh, a 5 plus 3x. Okay, um, both of these Oh, don't have the same factor there. So if we're looking at factoring that, we want to look a little closer and say, where can we go from there? Oh, I skipped number 10. Let's go back to number 10. Okay, so I have a b squared plus 1 and a b squared plus 1. Be a little careful on this one um, because this looks like, oh, I don't have anything here. If there's not anything, you can always put 1 times, and that is a factor of 1. So if I say this thing here, has a factor of b squared minus 1, and this thing here has a factor of b squared minus 1. I can factor out that b squared, oh, it's plus 1. Well, I've been saying minus this whole time. And then what's left here is this negative 2b plus what's left here is this 1. That didn't even look like it was there. Okay, looking now at number 11, this one's a little different because it still has that form. So if this thing and this thing were the same, we could factor that out. Or if 4x and 9 had any common factors, we could factor that out. Right? Those are all things that are being multiplied in these two larger terms. Um, but since they're not the same, this is not factorable. Okay, quick note, because sometimes things will look this different, but they might be the same. And that's with our negatives, that if we have a negative 1 times, let's say, x minus 1, Okay. Um, keep in mind that if you distribute that negative 1, this is the same thing as negative x plus 1, which is the same thing as 1 minus x. Um, so if you look like you have close to the same thing, but it doesn't look exactly right, you can always factor out a negative to get your signs to change. So for example, like this guy here, this is an x minus 1 and a 1 minus x. Those are not the same thing. But if I pulled a negative out of one of them, um, let's do this first one. So if I pull a negative out, now this becomes negative x plus 1, because I'm changing both of the signs. Now these two things are the same. Right? I have a 
negative x plus 1 and 1 minus x. This I could rewrite as 1 minus x. That's the same thing. So now these two things do have a 1 minus x. And then we're left with that negative 3 plus 4x. Okay, You could have done that opposite and changed your sign here. Um, essentially what that would do is all of your signs would be opposite. right? If I took a, took a negative out of the whole thing, it would just flip-flop all of your signs. So if your answer looks really close but doesn't look exactly the same, that doesn't necessarily mean it's wrong. Um, it might be just be a sign thing like that. Okay, so same thing here. Um, let's do the second one here. So if I pull out a negative 1, this becomes plus 3, and then negative y plus 7. But negative y plus 7 is the same thing as 7 minus y, Ooh, which now matches this guy here. So I can pull out that 7 minus y and then be left with 4y plus 3. Okay, so biggest skill here for factoring is this greatest common factor. You always want to start here no matter what you're looking at with your factoring. So that is all I have for you. Thanks so much for watching.